You got a hat. What's he eating? <laughs> Is he going to grab that? Don't tell me he's going to grab that. Oh my god. Are we finally back? <laughs> Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone. Episode 121! Wow! 121! Scroop my nuples. Scroop them. We're back. We're fucking back in the stewed. Is this, is this laptop right in the way? Do you really need to see this arm, though? That's all it was covering. Can you believe it? Well, you, I'm sure you can. It's not that big of a deal. I'm back in the studio. Back where I belong. Back where things feel right. Back with the mushrooms. And you may notice a little bit of a lighting configuration going on. Where it changes from green to orange to yellow. You know, I talked about doing a little spooktober type event here. Sort of ordeal. But, um... Yeah. Not quite gonna happen, I guess. What? Why not? Are you that lazy? No, well, no. I mean, no. It's just if I wanted to do that, I'd have to go buy shit. And if I have to go buy shit, I have to literally leave my town. Which is like at least an hour and a half from anywhere that can actually supply Halloween stuff that's actually quality. Because I live in such a shithole. And also... I'm only back for about a week, and I'm pretty sure I'm going back to work away. Which is unfortunate, and I'm not looking forward to it. But, so I figured if, you know, if I'm just going to be leaving again, I shouldn't even bother buying shit, right? Because, uh, I mean, I could just make enough pop poop casts throughout this week, because I'm, I'm here for at least a week. You smell that? It smells like it smells like a shit podcast. <laughs> no, but seriously, I smell I got new neighbors. Let me just whisper, I got new neighbors. They live downstairs in the downstairs area. And I can hear every little thing they do. And I'm sure they can hear every little thing I do. But not only can I hear them, I can smell what they're cooking. Especially in this room. Because I don't know. I think this vent is right above their kitchen. Because in this room, the scent of the food is beyond stinky. No one, no one else's food smells as good as your own food. You know what I'm saying? Same with farts. You can fart and you'll be like, hey, man, that smells pretty good. <laughs> but then your buddy farts and you're like, oh, get that away from me. Check this out. I got the whitest sneaker award. You see that? Oh, I can just zoom in. What am I doing? I got the technology. Let me not block it. Da 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 da. Look at that whitest sneaker award, 2005. You recognize what that's from? That is from. Man, this thing's slow. I don't want to zoom out too much here. Oh, that's too much. There's the there's the ticket. This is from That's a slow zoom. Why does it zoom so slow? This is from the office. The show, The Office. Ugh. I think I mentioned I was getting it in a different podcast. Um 
the Dundies. Jenna Fisher, Pam Beasley won the award for the whitest sneakers. And that's uh, the mug from then. It was a great show. You know I love it. Stop that, please. You know I love it. And so I bought the I bought the mug. Limited. Ah, Savannah. And Janice is stepping up her game. She put actual water in my cup. Too bad it's warm, though, Janice. Well, it's not too bad, I guess, Janice. You're lucky. Janice, one more fucking strike, and I swear to God, you're done. You got it? I don't fucking care. If you're a woman, I disrespect everyone equally. And Janice, you're on thin ice. But good thing you got me some, at least got me some water this time. You understand, Janice? Come. Uh, and we got this, we got this fucking soundboard. So when I go back, oh, I don't even want to think about it or talk about it, but. The day is going to come where I have to fucking go back to that fucking shithole and do shit that I don't want to do or should be doing, but I'm fucking doing it anyway. Uh, I'm going to bring a light. I'm going to actually bring my camera cord so I can actually record and upload the goddamn footage. Unlike last time where I recorded a nice good 20 minute segment finished, realized I didn't have my fucking cord. I had to redo it. And the second time around, a lot shorter and a lot shittier. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Mmm. You know what's good? Sp it's spooktober. It's October. Spooky, spooky. Oh, spooky, spooky. I don't even remember... I don't even remember what sound bites I have. What do we got here? Okay, all the classics, the ones I already know. Da 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 da. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> Kyle C, this guy. I don't want to do butcher no more. Okay. I was talking to him on YouTube about how he should, how he should, um, you know, contact your mom's house and try to get on there or something. And I also was asking, like, hey, how the fuck, like, I want to hear your story, dude. Like, what's the deal? And he's, and he contacted me and he's like, uh, yeah, I've got a video explaining the whole thing. He sent me like three different links. <laughs> To give a full background about this whole acupuncture thing. One of them is like a, a book about what... It's not really a book, but it's like a... I don't know, a few pages of writing, which I haven't read. He sent a, like a 45-minute video. Which explains everything about this acupuncture thing. I didn't watch it. <laughs> I plan on watching it, okay? And then he's now he's following me on Twitter, too. So it's like, wow, whoa. That's pretty cool. The acupuncture fella. I should just call him by his name, Kyle C. He's following me on the twit, Twitter, Twitter, twits. I need better sound bites, man. I've got nothing. Like these audience ones, I'm never going to use. This shit. <laughs> Like I figured out that little combination of of the punchline drums and the and the bathtub fart. Oh, didn't work. Didn't work. I keep hitting it twice. Squeak. Crickets. I need some good ones. Okay, guys, let's do some dancing. Let's, let's show, show me, me my, my moves. moves. Janice. New job. You're no longer on, well, you're still on water duty, but you're also on soundbite duty. 
If you come up with a good sound bite, uh, put it on the stream deck. Give you an extra cookie. Mm. Ah, Janice, you didn't see that. You didn't see that, okay? So what were we talking? We we're talking about the office. I got my Breaking Burt shirt on for two reasons. One, it's the only color shirt I have closest to the Halloween color. The color spectrum, I should say. I don't have an orange shirt. I used to. Don't know where it went. I don't even have a Halloween themed shirt. I'm not a big fan of yellows and oranges and reds. I have very little. Almost none. But purples, pinks, greens, and blues, that's my jam, okay? That's my jam. I can really smell whatever they're cooking down there, and let me tell you, it's not a pleasant smell. It's not pleasant. Why is that? You go to your friend's house as a child, and their, their parents are cooking supper, and it's like, that doesn't smell fucking good at all. And maybe it's because it's a combination of the food smell and the house smell. Because you also notice everyone has their own house smell. And you can walk into your house every day and you won't recognize it because you got accustomed to it. But your friend's house, you recognize that smell right away. And it's like, what is this smell? Everyone's got their own house smell. Everyone's got their own body smell. We all smell. You stink. I stink. We all stink. And that's what we need to take out of this. But the other reason why I have this shirt on is because uh, El Camino, the Breaking Bad movie, was released last night at midnight. And I'm about to watch it. I should have watched it and then talked about it here. I don't. I'm doing everything backwards. I talk about it before I even see it. Same with that Kyle C situation. You guys got <laughs> any bags of bird ham in here? So yeah, I'm pre I'm 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 excited about that because Breaking Bad is one of the one of my all time favorite shows. Well, it's got a, it's probably my all time favorite show. It's fucking fantastic in so many ways. <laughs> It's a, it's a wonderful piece of art. Fart. Uh, don't worry, we're going to get into some Reddit as well a little later on. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Here's today's card. It's tradition around here to show you the card, but it's not tradition to show you what's on the card. But you'll find out because I'll talk about it anyway. Okay. So, um, let me just take a quick look here. Yeah, Shane Dawson has been doing, he's been doing his thing. Putting out more documentaries. He's got his shit figured out. Like I've said before, um, whatever that guy puts out, he ends up on number one trending for at least a week. So the f the guy knows what he's doing. Um, and now he's getting involved with Jeffree Star. And I, okay, so this is something I can talk about that I actually watched. He's got two parts out. He might even have the third part out. I don't know. Maybe not. No, I don't think so. Who knows? But I watched at least the two the two parts. And let me tell you, I think I talked about this last episode. Oh, get down. I talked about this last episode, but I'm going to talk, touch on it again. He, he's starting his own makeup line with Jeffree Star. And yeah, the whole series is a bit cheesy. And it's a, it can be cringeworthy at times. But I'm, uh, I'm just stepping out of my comfort zone when watching this. Because normally, if, you know, if I wasn't, if I didn't like Shane Dawson as much as I do and have, and I've, you know, I mean, I shouldn't say I've known him forever, but I, I've watched his content forever. He's been around 
forever. And so I like what the guy does. And I think he's actually pretty funny and all kinds of stuff. So I'm willing to step into this Jeffree Star world and check it out. And you know what? It's not as bad as some people may say. I find it fairly interesting. Yeah, he's a little overdramatic, as always. <laughs> but, um, whatever, you know? It's obviously working. He's get <coughs> <coughs> He's getting the views. And now he's going to be a multi-millionaire, according to this documentary, anyway. Um... But I still, I still obviously prefer the conspiracy stuff and the, uh, well, the conspiracy stuff was, I was, I like that the most. I hope he does more of that, but who knows? He might not even do anything anymore after this makeup shit. Maybe this is the point where Shane's going to transition, you know, he's transitioned a lot. And like I've said before, every time he transitioned to some new form of content creation, it's always a hit. And I always enjoy it. But maybe this is the the point where he breaks off in such a different direction that I'm no longer going to be interested. Who knows? Who know? My poop looks like angel hair pasta. That's right. My poop, it looks like angel hair pasta. I am like the elephant. I am like the elephant. My poop looks like angel hair pasta. I was slightly nervous getting back into this. I didn't even recognize this house. I was gone for like two and a half, three weeks or something. I don't even know. Come back and then it's like, what? Where am I? The house didn't smell like I remember it. I didn't. It took me a little bit to get back into the comfort of the of this of this place but now i'm settled in and it's like okay now i remember and then as soon as i get nice and comfortable and set in and i have to leave again so yeah there's that so what's what's the deal with these lights here i wonder if it's even gonna look good this is what i used to do with this podcast in the past i only had this light well, I had that light too, actually. But I was doing like pinks and purples and greens, my faves colors. You know what I should have done is angled this camera up just a little bit. So you could see more of those mushrooms. I could do that right now, but like I, this fucking room is so crammed and small. Just to get up and move over to the camera would take like... 30 seconds <laughs> because when I'm you can't tell but if I get up right now and I move the chair I have to push the chair back in against the table or else I can't get out but also if I just let the chair go the house and floor is crooked the chair spins around and it hits the backdrop and tears it down so you gotta you gotta prop <laughs> the chair up against something sturdy like this table so it doesn't spin so then after that you gotta walk out and around this table but the space between the table and the wall is maybe this big so you gotta shimmy through but there's also cables all over the floor so you gotta shimmy through step over the cables without unplugging anything without moving the table if you bump the table you fuck everything up because then it's out of position and then the space between the camera and the table and the lighting is also only about this big. So you gotta squeeze through that without bumping into shit. And then you gotta go around the camera, which is another tight space. And then flip the viewfinder around, adjust it, and then flip it back. And then walk all the way around, dodging all this shit. It's, it's you know... I long for the day when I can actually be in a place where I have tons of room and a proper studio and a nice sign, you know, like Dynamite Gizmo production sign 
or something of that nature. It'd be neon, proper lighting, proper camera, proper mic, proper recording software, proper everything. I'm so, it's so it's very improper now, but I'm doing my best to make it look as proper as possible. With, with the resources that I have, you know. Normally, when people do and jump into these endeavors, they have money and they, uh, you know, they they can afford just, you know, if they need something, they go, okay, write this on the list, buy it, ship it right now. <sighs> Me, I gotta buy something like every fucking three or four months when I have enough money. And you know, even then, I kind of just avoid it because I never have money, so I just use the collection of what I ha- I have. Lots of equipment here that I've gathered since I was 12 years old, but a lot of it's outdated. So, you know, you always got to buy shit. Janice? Why don't you shut up? You shouldn't be looking. Yeah, I know you got me the water for a reason. I'll drink it, okay? I like the wide-angle lens. When I grab this mug and pull it in, it like... (laughs) It gets bigger and smaller. I don't know if you can notice that, but I sure do. Mmm. Mmm. Ooh, water is fucking gross. My camera keeps plunking up numbers and and moving stuff around. Oh! I can't wait for the day when I don't have to travel eight hours just to work in some place that I do not want to be. I can't freaking wait. Um... So we're talking about, I was, you know, I just said I want to get a sign. Well, I got, I got some fucking business cards coming. Professional ones with like, I don't even want to, I don't want to say what's on it until I get them. But it's not like, it's not just a piece of paper. There's, you could, if there's stuff on it. Okay. I won't, I won't say any more than that. But, uh, fucking Ryan Faroki. Faraki, I think it's, I don't know how to pronounce it. Rhino Labs, the editor of Dynamic Banter, is making my business cards. I just contacted him and said, yo, what's up? What's up, bro? (laughs) Can you make me some business cards or what, bitch? And he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. (laughs) No, it wasn't like that at all. Um... He seems like a cool dude, obviously, but he made my business cards, and now I just gotta wait for them to ship, if they do ship, because he, uh, whatever, you know? <sighs> yeah, dynamic banter. I ha- I'm connected. <laughs> Barely, but I'm connected to dynamic banter just slightly, because of the fact that I used their editor to make my business cards. You know, if you want to make it in this world, you got to take steps in the, in the direction of getting noticed by other creators. And so I've been taking little baby steps forever. I was featured on Bob Jen's channel. I was featured on, is it a good idea to microwave this? I was featured on, uh, how we reporting live, which, you know. He was slightly big back in the day, but nothing really. I was featured on I was featured on a few other ones, but that didn't affect me at all. But I'm still heading in the right direction. And it's cool to say that someone like Ryan Faroki is that how you say his name? I don't even know. We'll just call him Ryan. Was able to make my business cards. And what's gonna happen next? Who knows? I'm still a nobody. I still have no views. I still have no subscribers. And I still don't know how to promote. Uh, 
but I I'm getting these business cards. And so I'm going to utilize them in creative ways to get my name out there. <laughs> I won't tell you what I'm going to do with them, but let's just say check your underwear because you might find a square or a rectangle piece of paper in there. It's not just paper. There's more to it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. So, what are you being for Halloween? Fuck, do I ever miss being a child? It was so goddamn simple being a child. You didn't have to worry about literally anything other than whatever it was you wanted to do that day. The, oh, I just farted. The only worries you had were what your friends thought about you. That's it. Jenny doesn't like me. Oh, well. Let's go play some ball and video games and eat food that I didn't even have to make and steal some money out of my mom's purse and go break some glass behind the school and then go home and sleep and wake up and do whatever I want. You know? It was fun. Being a child. And then like... Ah, fuck off, slipper! <laughs> and then like you get in a situation. You don't even have to deal with the situation. You get your parents to deal with the situation for you. I mean, obviously, in certain circumstances. But for the most part, if something goes down where you need to communicate with an adult you get your parents to communicate with that adult and you just sit back and be like ha fuck you bitch i got parents but i don't everyone's situation different <laughs> there's kids that grow up that have to completely raise themselves and raise their siblings because their parents are uh well, they're either either their parents are just too busy, they don't have time for the children, or the parents are just like pieces of junk and don't pay attention to the children, or they don't have parents, or you know, there's plenty of situations where children have to raise themselves, and that really, uh, that that um, prepares them for the real world. But then there's children, and the majority of children grow up completely dependent on their parents and guardians and teachers where they just cruise through childhood with no fears and no problems and then no guidance on what the real world's going to be like and then all of a sudden graduation happens and they're like, well, shit, now what? Like, what the fuck do I do now? And then it's just absolutely frightening. That was me. You see? I was not prepared for this world. And a lot of people weren't. But I'm almost 25 now and I'm starting to understand it's not as bad as I <laughs> thought it was. <clears throat> I got phlegm in my throat. And so this idea of being scared, frightened of the real world, is kind of the center point idea, the, the main kind of ideology of what my book is based on. I'm writing, for those who don't know, I'm writing a fictional novel. Is every novel fictional? I don't know. I should know. If you're going to write a book and you don't even know what kind of book... Like, fuck off. <laughs> I'm writing... I'm just, I had this idea in grade 11 for a book. And I started writing it then. And I've been writing it ever since. Kind of on and off. But over the past month or so, I've really been dedicating a lot of time to writing this book. And, well, I don't really want to just throw the idea out there 
of what the plot is. Because uh, it's something I hold dear to me. It's one of the things that I can't go without. If I go somewhere, I gotta bring my laptop so I can write in my book. I gotta work on the book. And that's something I need to get out there because it's a it's a really it's one it's probably one of my most creative ideas I've ever had, and I've stuck with it this long that it's not worth giving up on. And so I'll just give a brief synopsis. Um, I've been trying to find the best way to really describe this so that it doesn't come across as, you know, like sometimes I describe the book, but I describe it in a way where people just say, why did you describe it? There's an easier way to describe it. I describe it the hard way. So I've been trying to come up with an easier way to describe it because as soon as you say, fuck off, stop hitting the microphone stand. <laughs> as soon as you describe, as soon as you say you're working on a book, the first thing people say, so that's why I don't tell anyone, but the first, but when I do tell them, the first thing that they say is, what is it about? Oh, you want to know what it's about? I haven't fucking, you know, come up with something new to say. I'm so sick. And obviously it's understandable that people are going to say that, but there's people I work with who literally say the same shit every day. Literally the same shit, the same stories, the same phrases, the same little, uh, you know, everything is the same, the same questions. And it drives me fucking insane. Especially when you have to work with the same people every day for like three weeks straight in a place that you don't want to be, it's aggravating. You wake up in the morning, you go down to the bus stop, and they're like, oh, good morning. How was your sleep? Did you sleep well? It's like, fuck. That's, you said that yesterday, and you said that the day before. Why do you keep asking me? And then, you know, at lunchtime, it's like they commentate on what the fuck you're eating. You pull out a sandwich, and like, oh, Good old turkey on raw. It's like, shut the fuck up, man. You don't have to describe my food every time I eat the shit. Like, they have to they have to look at what you're eating. You pull something out of the bag, they look over. And then they describe it. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> Just let me eat it. And I, I always predict it. I'm like, ugh. like, it gets to a point where I don't even want to pull the food out. To eat it because I know as soon as I do all their fucking stupid eyes are gonna look straight at it and then they're gonna say shit about it and they do it to everyone <laughs> it's like someone pulls out a fucking muffin and they're like oh chocolate chip muffin shut up like do you have to say what it is it's so fucking it drives me insane anyway so the book is about, I don't even like saying that. The book is about, mm. obviously, you're telling me what the book's about. You don't have to say the book is about. Imagine a baby, okay? And the baby is born in a hospital room. It's a pleasant experience. Uh, usually everyone involved is... At least when the baby's once the baby comes out, it's a happy moment, right? Except for the baby, the baby's kind of usually not happy, crying. But uh, the baby sees the happiness around the room. Okay, it doesn't, you know, it can't recognize it or process it or even communicate what is going on other than crying. But uh, imagine. We'll say, like, moments later, the baby loses all of its senses. Cannot see, taste, touch, hear, smell. Ugh. What happens? Okay? You got this baby. You got this basically lifeless baby that's breathing. Can't do anything. But it still has the brain. Okay? It still has a brain. And the brain still functions normally. 
the brain can still take what the what the baby has experienced in its little in that little moment of life and it can expand on on whatever it, it took in in that moment and it can create a world strictly within the mind and that is where the baby will reside being that it has no senses to operate in the real world it has to create and manipulate a world in its mind and you know life goes on and it uh the world that the baby creates throughout its life however long it doesn't have his or her senses you know it turns into a world strictly based on its own ideologies whatever it feels is right and necessary that is what the world will be based upon and it, that is that is the that is basically the utopia everyone wants, right? Because everyone, if there were such an idea as a utopia, everyone would have to have their own specific utopia because everyone's different. And so this baby that has no senses is going to have its own utopia as it gets older, not even realizing that there is a real world. And then eventually, let's say those senses come back and the baby you know, gains as access to the real world. Then what? It's going to instantly realize how scary and unpredictable the real world is, and it's going to be so vastly different than this dream, we'll call it a dream world. And so that baby has to operate and learn to cope with this, this scary the scary details of the real world and it has to make a choice or at least it feels it has to make a choice being you know is it gonna stay in the dream world if it even can or is it gonna learn to cooperate with the real world and it's you know an internal struggle that no one can relate to and that's ba you know that's all I, that's as far as I want to go that is basically the idea of this story I'm writing. And it didn't even start off that way. It just started, it was an idea I had in class. I still remember what class it was. It was one of those classes where it was like a, a dist, they called it distance learning. So your teacher was somewhere else in a different fucking city. But you just did the, you taught yourself. You had all the, you had the, the, the book, the online book, whatever that was. You know, the fucking textbook. <laughs> you had that on the computer and you'd read through that and answer the questions and do your own tests. But you'd be in a classroom with other students. There was, there was one teacher there just to supervise everyone, but the teacher didn't teach. You taught yourself in the classroom. And so basically you could fuck around all you wanted, if you wanted, and then just, you know, try to try to do the tests without even reading the textbook, which is what I would do, and I would barely pass. But while I was in that class, there was only there was only other like two other students doing this distance learning. It was a small town, still in the small town. Anyway, this I was just sitting there, I was probably doodling in my binder and then this idea came I just couldn't stop thinking about what the fuck why has no one experimented with senses and losing every single sense in the body and what would that be like and can you still survive in your mind and at the time it was such an explosive idea to me I just instantly was like okay fuck this school work i'm writing a bunch of notes down about this and then as soon as the school day was over i went home and i immediately started writing the book 
And within by the end of that year, I finished the first draft of that book, and then, or no, maybe not. No, I definitely didn't finish the. Because then I went to Vancouver Film School, right out of high school, and I started the book in grade eleven. So it was somewhere around like after I got back from Vancouver Film School that I finished the first draft. I don't know, I just kept developing it, and I'm still developing it. It's been fucking years. And I'm still, I'm basically on the third draft now. But it's, I'm constantly changing it. I'm constantly manipulating it in ways that it makes more sense to the human condition. And I'm understanding life a bit more as I get older. Yeah. So, you know, stuff's happening. It's not like I was constantly writing the book over those years, though. Like, there, was, there, there would be months I'd go without writing because I'd be focusing on either music because I was doing that for a little bit. And then, you know, it'd be like, yeah, I'd jump back into making little skits for YouTube and then I started the podcast and then I've been doing that and the podcast is really one of my main focuses now because I'm really getting into a good groove and I love podcasts it's basically the only thing I listen to and watch I don't watch TV I don't watch movies I watch YouTube and specifically on YouTube, I basically just watch podcasts. And if I am if I don't have access to YouTube and I'm driving long distance, which is m- way more often than not, I just listen to podcasts. And then I walk and then I listen to podcasts. It's just I don't go a day without at least listening to like five podcasts. It's just po- I'm constantly podcasting, whether I'm making it or listening to it. And then, you know, I, I will watch the odd TV show here and there, but it's very rare. And then I I keep up on my YouTube stuff as well. How long have we been going? 43 minutes, and I still have... I still have a few more shit to talk about. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So I don't even know if I want to talk about that. But let's just do it. I only got two more things to talk about. Uh, just still got to do some Reddit as well. Um, so this is kind of something I don't really need to talk about, but we'll talk about it. Bell Delphine. If you look here, uh, the <laughs> I was about to call her a bitch. <laughs> Probably shouldn't, right? Um... She got arrested. Now, Ethan was predicting that she got arrested because she stopped doing anything online. She stopped uh, participating in her Patreon. She wasn't posting any updates on Twitter or Instagram or anywhere. She was just gone off the face of the earth. And so Ethan was thinking she was getting in trouble for selling her bathwater online because it's a bottle, it's, you know, fluid. It's not really a bodily fluid because it didn't come from her body, but it's it's a fluid with her flaky flakes. Well, I guess she did send her spit in the mail. So he thought she was in trouble for that. So she posts this picture and says, I got arrested. Lol. And so then Ethan was like, I fucking called it. I do it. I don't know. But she got, so she did get arrested. See, like right here. Oh, no, never mind. She got arrested, but she didn't get arrested for what you would have thought she got arrested for. She apparently... uh, So what does it say? I stig... So what does that mean? I STG? I stig this girl, came to my party, and stole my hamster. I think it's supposed to say saw. I have no idea why or who the fuck does that. I spray painted the fuck. 
out of her car and got arrested. At least I got my hamster back. So she had a party. Someone stole her hamster. Belle spray painted her car. And we'll get to that in a second. And then, you know, that's what caused her to get arrested. But she got her hamster back. So here's the text. Um, she's okay. Let me zoom in here. She said she saw you carrying my hamster outside, but thought it was a joke. But now my hamster's missing. So where the fuck is she? Have you taken her? Hello? Can you reply, please? Lol, what are you talking about? I didn't take your hamster outside. I literally have two people now saying they saw you. Lol, okay then. So what the fuck is this then? And then a different text says, Hey, did you take Belle's hamster the other night? Because someone's been asking. Lol, yeah, I thought it would be jokes. That's so fucked up. Why? So someone stole her hamster. Hamsters are gross. Um, but anyway. So Belle does this. She p she paints Pepe the Frog, it looks like, with a, <laughs> uh, a rainbow afro and a gun. And she's given the OK symbol, which is apparently controversial now. Um, let's not get into that. And she also writes, Bitch, give me my hamster back. So it doesn't look like she's even using spray paint. She's using paint. Just paint and a paintbrush. Um, maybe she just did that for Pepe and then spray this, because this kind of looks like spray paint here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What else we got? And here's your hamster. So she got the hamster back. No, I don't really need to talk about this. If you don't even know who Belle Delphine is, she's basically... Uh, do I have to explain? I don't have to explain. <sighs> she just posts... She posts, like, nudes and... I don't know. Just stuff for horny dudes to masturbate to. And she makes a shit ton of money for it. Which is fine. I'm not judging. If you're going to make money, make money. But she's young. <clears throat> she's not underage. But she's like right on the border of being underage. And, um. So, yeah. I don't fucking know. You gotta talk about stuff, right? Belle Delphine. She got arrested. Woo! Woohoo! Good story! Thank you for covering that. And one other thing before we get into Reddit. Um, the other... So, I was... The last podcast I did... Or might have been the two, two before. I don't know. I was talking about wildlife and how I saw a fox. And I was mentioning how there's bears as well. Where I'm at. But I, I mentioned now I'm probably not going to even see a bear. Well, uh, while I was there, I saw a fucking bear. Not only did I see a bear, I was right there with the bear. Okay? I could have walked maybe 15 meters in front of me, and I could have touched the bear. I could have been attacked by the bear. There was a bear, and it was there. I saw it. And I froze. Now when you when we work away, you gotta do these courses. I think I may have mentioned this. I can never remember what I talk about. But just like any job, you gotta do these fucking stupid safety courses. And one of them is bear awareness. I definitely mentioned this. Where it prepares you for what to do with when you can encounter a bear. Uh you know. If anyone pays attention to this, they're still not going to know what to do when they encounter a bear. It's not enough preparation. Um, I can I encountered a bear, and let me tell you, even if I paid attention to that bear awareness training, I still wouldn't know what to do. And I didn't. 
I was almost eaten alive by a black bear, even though it just ran away from me. <laughs> it wanted nothing to do with me. It ran the fuck away. So I said to myself, what should I do in this moment? I should film this fucking thing. This is podcast material right here. <laughs> you know, what, what, any, what any sane person would do, rather than get out of there, I said, I'm going to film it. Fuck it. If I get eaten, cool. That's a good story. Maybe I'll have some battle scars. So I whipped out the old phone and I was like, here we go. Bear time. That's all a lie. I did see a bear, but I it, 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 but I was in a I was in the truck. In the truck, the bear ran ran across the street and I got footage of it. So, anticlimactic, but I still saw a bear. So, here's that footage. There he is. Big old bear. And he's across the road, already back in the wilderness at this point. But... Um, okay, so he was literally right in front of us. He was on... He was on the other side of the road. He crossed the road. And I, you know, my camera started recording at this point when he was already kind of a distance away. I'm not even supposed to be, you're not even supposed to take video or photos at this location. But, uh, this doesn't reveal any, like, you could watch this and not have any idea where it's at, you know. What they don't want to see is the actual equipment and machinery that of what they're doing. They want none of that on social media because it turns out, uh, whoa, people like to protest and use it against them. You know, uh, I'm in an industry that I hate. Why am I in it? Get me out of it. <laughs> I'm I'm trying. I'm fucking trying to get out of it. Okay. I don't want I don't want people watching this to think that like oh he's just bitching but he's not doing anything about it. See the the there's I can't I shouldn't even talk about it really because I'm saying I'm trying but am I really? You know what I'm doing is I'm just looking for other jobs but it's no one wants me. I have no education. The only experience I have has been in this field of work. So if I try to look elsewhere, they just they're like, ah, he's only done this. We don't need you for this. We have other people who are more qualified. <sighs> so, you know, but I'm still trying to get the YouTube thing done. I'm trying to get my book done. And that this stuff takes time. It takes time, especially the book. And then you gotta get it out there, and you gotta you gotta make enough content first before you can start really promoting it. For a few reasons, one, no one's gonna want to watch your shit if you only have two episodes. They want to see that you're willing to bust it out consistently. But they, you also want a bunch of content out there so that you find your rhythm and you figure out what it is you're doing. And so that when you do promote it and people check it out, they're like, hey, this guy knows what he's doing. Even though you don't, you just practiced. Practice is my middle name. Okay, so let's do some Reddit. Shall we? Let's see if the tradition still holds up. Bam! Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. What is this thing? is the first on the list. What is this thing? I wonder, what is it? Who knows? This tool used to be from, that's not, is it? Well, yeah, it is. This tool used to be from my grandpa, grandma, and me have no clue. Thinking about pincers, 
but the twisting mechanism is odd. This looks like... I don't know. What is it? Did someone... It says solve. What is it? It's a hand vise used in jewelry and watch repair. <laughs> People whose first relationship was very long term what weird thing did you believe was normal until you started seeing other people Ew. <coughs> this is morbid but I thought it was normal to argue every day okay there's a dog and a cat woohoo I'm disappointed if disappointment had a face oh the, the old cat erase yep ha 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 yeah, we've seen this before. <laughs> She's not happy about that. That's a great idea. If I was still in school when I noticed this stuff starting to go viral, because I've seen this before, I probably would have done this. Because even today when I go to like the place I work at, we got to have safety meetings in the morning and there's a whiteboard. And when no one's around, I love drawing on it. So that when everyone comes in, they're like, what is this? Who drew this? And I don't say a fucking word. And no one knows it's ever me. I also make paper airplanes and like little fortune teller things. And I, I draw all over everything and I just leave it around there. And I don't say a word. And people find this shit and they have no idea where it comes from. And I love it. So this is something I would definitely do. And that looks like a penis that I would draw. It's a beautiful idea. Permanent marker penis. <laughs> and then the cat features with the whiteboard mark marker. You look at that, you're like, oh, it's just a cat. It's just a cat drawing. Let's erase it. Why is it? Oh, okay, here we go. Oh, okay. Ah. Who did this? <laughs> who did this but then it's instantly who did this and then it's a crackdown investigation because it's permanent marker you know and then you're going to get caught because someone's either going to rat you out or it's going to get to a point where they're, the teacher's going to keep asking who did this to the point where she's going to get so angry and frustrated that she's going to get the principal involved and then the principal's going to keep cracking down and interrogating everyone. And then eventually you're going to be like, fuck, I got to I gotta just turn myself in. I can't just, this can't go on any longer, you know? Either that or you just say, or you find a way to erase permanent marker off the board and you offer to erase it. You're like, you say, T I know how to get rid of permanent marker off a whiteboard. And then the teacher would never suspect that you actually did it. I mean, like, if you do this and this, well, maybe that would give it away. I don't know. Uh, a while back, who cares? Dog Walker picks up, picks dogs up on his bus. Oh, wow. That's okay. What could go wrong if I let this lady hump my face? Is this? I can't show that. Criminal just stabbed four people in shopping mall. What? I can't show that either. Electric upright base. Same tree, different seasons. That's nice. That's a nice picture right there. Bada boom, bada bing. That's cool. It's fall here. The trees have shedded their leaves. There's orange leaves all over the place. I woke up to a flat tire this morning. Once again. My truck is so fucked. And it's getting worse. Someone backed into it. There's a big fucking dent in it. And the 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 headlights all busted. Couldn't open my door. Got that fixed, so. 
Still waiting for insurance to fix the fucking bullshit. It's been like well over a month and a half. But that's fine. You know what? You just, you just. <sighs> Stuff happens in everyone's life and you just gotta, you just gotta. The 20% less sugar spoon. Pimp Chilla. You got a hat. What's he eating? <laughs> Is he going to grab that? Don't tell me he's going to grab that. Oh my god. Now that is cool. <laughs> I there was a point in my life where I had lizards, snakes, frogs. I've had I've had all kinds of little rodents and reptiles, hamsters. I don't think, but I've always wanted rabbits. I've always wanted a chinchilla but I never was able to get one. Why does it say that? That's a tiny recorder. I never had... I never did get a chinchilla. As much as I wanted one, I didn't get one for a few reasons because my mother was under the impression that they're stinky, which they probably are because hamsters are stinky. Um... And they're nocturnal, so they spend all night just running around making a bunch of noise. And I don't know, there was a few reasons. I didn't never get one. Wanted one. Never had one. I should get one now. No, I shouldn't, because of this fucking stupid job. This job I have, I, you know, I, I'm telling you, though. When I'm stable and I don't have to worry about at any moment, I have to just get up and leave. What's going on here? It thinks there's a face here. It puts a box around faces and it thinks there's a face there. When I'm settled in my own place, I'm going to get a chinchilla. Maybe. Maybe not. I'll get something. I'm definitely going to have more animals. I lo I've always loved animals. Maybe that's what I should get into. I should be a zookeeper. <laughs> no, don't do that. Zoos are terrible. When are we going to recognize that just trapping animals in a cage simply just to look at them is wrong and stupid why did like we're gonna look back on that in 50 years to who however many years from now and we're gonna be like what the fuck what was that you you talk to you still talk to people now and they just don't care they're like it's just an animal and it's like well you used to say that about black people, too. <laughs> I'm not saying I said it. I'm saying that's what people used to say back in the day, okay? There you literally used to be human zoos. They'd put black people in cages, and you'd come and observe them like a fucking animal. And you'd... There would be signs in the cage that says, Don't feed the black people. <laughs> I'm not making this shit up. So don't twist it into some sort of racist bullshit. Like I'm racist. And it sucks that we have to say this. Because you can't even talk about history without being claimed as a racist bigot. <sighs> Freshman. Slowly moving wall of thoughts. The freshman's next class. A California teenager named Stephen. Okay, I, I was sick. 
I have the sniffles, so if I'm constantly sniffling, it's because I have the sniffles. A California teenager named Steven Ortiz traded up an old phone on Craigslist for different items until he eventually acquired a Porsche. That's not true, but... uh... Oh, it is on the Dunder Mifflin page. Okay, because it reminded me of... Of Dwight, when he, when they were having that, uh, like a fucking uh, garage sale, he started with a pay or uh, a thumbtack and traded his way to a telescope and then traded the telescope for some magic beans. Shower thoughts if magic exists and we scientifically studied it, it would stop being magic and become just another scientific discipline. Ew! Shower thought! How've been possible? What is that? How've been possible? This person obviously doesn't speak English as a first language. How've? (laughs) Exactly. How've been possible? That sentence doesn't exist okay the word have have is that even can you use that let me think no you can't have that doesn't exist how have been possible i understand what he's trying to say like how is this possible how is that possible what the fuck who's cooking Okay, I thought that was like a coffee pot, but it looks like it's a blender. So somehow the blender shot the cup out, uh, and it's stuck into the ceiling and plastered whatever cheese all over the place. Now everyone's fucking... (laughs) Making little compound words, making fun of this guy. Y'all haven't <laughs> seen anything yet. Uh, who, who'd I have thought? All y'all, who'd have thunk a stick? <laughs> that would have been a better title. Yes, and y'all haven't seen anything yet. America's got smart peeps. These are great. How have been? Feel the clang. Feel the clang. Feel the clang. Whoa. What is she doing? (laughs) This guy's like, what the fuck? Woman. When you're usually depressed, but you get a small random burst of weed. Yay, grass. That's something I was looking forward to. Didn't smoke the entire time I was there because you can't. Uh, They have, uh, they literally have security everywhere. They also have police that show up every once in a while with dogs that sniff everything. They go through each, they go down the hallway and the dog will sniff under each door. And if he suspects something, he'll sit by the door. They will break into your room They will search everything in your room, every bag, every crevice, everything, until they find whatever it is they're looking for. If they find nothing, uh, they fold your shit back up and they put it back. But still, it's an insane breach of privacy. Um, You can't go anywhere without scanning your card. You can't even go to the bathroom. Well, you can go to the bathroom. I'm just kidding. If you go out the building, you got to scan. If you come in the building, you got to scan. If you go in the lunchroom, you got to scan. If you come out the lunchroom, you got to scan. If you go into the area where you got to get your your lunch for the next day, you got to scan. And you scan out. You scan, scan. They know where you at all the time. You got to scan to get in your room. You. It's, you know. It's not, but it's still not as like high security as like a 
military base. Let's do one more Reddit thing here. New cutting edge comfort therapy. Okay, that's not... Snake, you remember Snake? How long is it going to go? Uh... It's pretty good, whoever this is. Whoa. See, when, you, when your snake gets this long, then you really got to be creative on how you're going to do things. You got to do like the zigzags he's doing here. But that is fast movement. This is definitely sped up. Like, there's no way the game goes this fast. I definitely never was able to get this far. This is the games that were on cell phones back in the day. This is all you had. You had this. And what was that? Like, blocks? I forget what it was called. Where the paddle would move back and forth. And the ball would bounce around. And you'd... You'd uh, you'd crush other blocks up in the sky. Oh my God! Look at that move. Jeez, Louise, Poppy. This is cray cray. Jesus. Is it just going to go till the whole screen is filled? This is Gnarls Barkley. Here we go. Yeah, you did it. I just got to read the comments here. What does it say? This is stressing me out. Can you just make it a set path that can loop and reach every tile? Well. Well, people! First episode back in the studio. There will be a few more in the studio, but... Uh, unfortunately, I gotta go back to that shithole. And so there's, you know... Then there'll be episodes there, and then I'll be back, and then hopefully I won't go back. But uh, you never know with this stupid fucking job that I'm in. So anyway, that's it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification. You know what to do, just like everyone says. And... Uh, enjoyed it hope to see you in the next one bye bye everyone goodbye mm. <laughs> like how do you drink a juice box without looking like a little bitch you can't you gotta pour that shit into a glass Do ba 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 do 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 ba da da ba bow. If you gotta sneeze, just sneeze. Don't hold back. <laughs>